Hello everyone, we are the Blinder Group. We made the game The Invisible One. I am Jack Wagner, the master of soundtrack shenanigans. I worked on the soundtrack and the sound effects in the game. And I'm Ashley, I'm kind of the CEO of the team. Uh, I work on the gameplay and also part of the physics. And out on the stage, we have Yun Kai, also known as the seahorse of our team. And can you please say hi to everyone? <laughs> And next we have our artist, Jean. Uh, she's the uh, polygon Picasso of our team because she all work on both of the 2D, UI, art, and also the models. <laughs> and next we have Yu Cheng, who is the animation ninja. So she, he worked on the model loading and the animation loading. And then we have Xiao Xiao, who is our chief coffee consumer. <laughs> she is basically an expert of everything you will see on the screen. And next, we have Man Shi, who is our synchronization master. She worked on the network and also a lot of the gameplay stuff. And finally, we have Jia Hui, who is our master of the pixel perfection, who worked on the network and also uh, our 2D UI implementation. Our game is a unique RPG that takes place in a circus maze. We have two different perspectives for the four different players. One is a dark first person perspective that gives off horror vibes and the other three players are in a third person's perspective, trying to help the visually impaired um, player get out of the maze. Since we are a story-driven game, we have some background story to show here. Um, as you can see, the circus was once where Alice loved to go with her parents. They had so much fun there. But after her parents passed away, the, that lovely place became Alice's trauma. She is haunted by everything in the circus because everything there would remind her of the past that she could never go back. Alice collapsed and lost her vision as her mind got trapped in the distorted circus. But fortunately, a group of people with special abilities can enter Alice's spiritual world and save Alice. But Alice is invisible to them, and they will not be able to know where Alice is unless they develop a higher level of awareness of the surrounding by destroying the obstacles in the maze. So upper right corner, that is the obstacles, and Alice will feel more insecure as she gets tripped over them. So when the level of insecurity reaches the maximum, she loses all the hope and everyone will lose the game. The other players will use different skills to get Alice to the exit. Bob can place a bear saying goodbye to single Alice that this is the wrong way. Carol can play lights in the cir circus and David can enter Alice's perception. So the clock is ticking, will Alice be saved in time? That is the story of the invisible one. Now our players can choose their roles to play. And are there any volunteers that want to try out our game? Uh, 
Also remember that our game is a collaborative game, so feel free to talk with each other and let others know where you are in the game. And also the next page is the character selection page. Once you have chosen your character, you cannot um, revert your choice. So we are going to watch our seahorse play Carol. And we can see some of the UI on the map. This is going to be the level of awareness. Once this bar is full, fully up, we will be able to see Alice on the minimap. And on the minimap, we can see the green flag, which is the exit of the maze, and the yellow star, which is the current player position. Here we see Bob and Carol and they could use their skills like Bob just used his skill there to put a bear with some balloons on to signal to Alice that there is a dead end. Carol can use her skill to create a light that can lead Alice to Carol. The players will have to destroy various obstacles to be able to raise their level awareness. That bowling pin, for instance, is one of the obstacles. And as Carol destroys it, the level of awareness starts going up and up. Over here, we have the skill. And this color indicates that the skill is currently up. Then when Seahorse uses the skill, it turns dark and that light appears where Alice can see and be led to Carol. Okay. Now the awareness level has reached the maximum, so now you can see Alice's location. So Alice is still stuck in uh, his, her initial location. Oh, Alice moves, so maybe someone should go and save her. So in our game, we have three different sub-maps. Each one has a different layer in the soundtrack that is activated by going to the far corner and it will have a certain radius that will play um, over the bass track. So to give it a more carnival-esque feel, there's multiple different areas that you can travel to. And another thing is that the players have this amount of time left to escort Alex out of the maze or they lose. As you see, there's a little collision here. <laughs> exit of the maze, but Alice is still nowhere to be found. <laughs> They're going to have to go all the way down there and get her, or she will fall over crying. Remember, you can talk with each other, so feel free to ask where you should go. Yeah, you guys should talk should around or Alice is going to die. <laughs> is just on the side there. Again, Alice is invisible, so they can't see her. Oh, they're zooming. Oh. 
This is the windscreen. Yeah. Next job, Alice is safe. Now we can have another two players to do another round. So yeah. if you want to play, you can come down. Yeah, we're going to do one more round showing Alice's perspective now, the first person view. It's a little bit more creepy. That's why we want to dim the lights. Here, so you can come down. All right, as we see, this is now Alice's view. Um, it's very dimly lit. The idea is that you do not want your level of insecurity to go all the way down, or you will lose the game. A couple ways that the level of insecurity would go down is if you hit one of the obstacles, um, you will take that damage. Let's see, <laughs> the crystal just hit the obstacle so the level of insecurity is going down um, in the bottom corner we can see Alice's skill which is called white cane oh and there is David he can reveal himself to Alice and lead her out of the maze clearing obstacles but you don't want to go too fast because <laughs> now we're lost That was Alice's skill that you just saw on the screen. And this is Carol's skill. <laughs> David's trying to lead Alice out of the maze. <laughs> oh, in the f David's light has faded. All right, we're gonna use Alice's skill here. <laughs> A little jump scare <laughs> from David once again. And something that you might notice as well is that the mini-map is completely gone for Alice, so that's why it's pretty hard to play, because you actually have no idea where you're going. It is up to the other players to communicate and lead you to the finish line.
Oh, there's Bob Skill. You can see it chilling in the corner. <laughs> yeah, the, David is really zooming around the map, not really leaving much room for Alice to go anywhere. Players are running out of time. Oh. Oh, turn around. Oh, there it is. Go. I don't know if Alice is going to win this. David's really going to have to try. All right. And looks like time is about to expire. I think they just saw the exit, but lost. <laughs> Poor Alice. Thank you. Questions? Oh yeah, questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them. Right here. Um. I think I'm going to pass this to a different person. I think this is mainly for the Alice first person view. So if you do like all the AD for turning around, it would be better for the first person view. So, uh, and we don't want to have two different um, control methods for like different players. So. We decided to use that for the third person as well. Oh, um, question for them here. What inspired the environment in this uh, game? Yeah, so actually the idea came from um, a vlog I saw online, which shows a blind person going out to a train station. So I felt like the entire world is kind of a maze for her. So going out itself is kind of an adventure. So that's why I um, came up with this idea of um, Alice being blind and others come to rescue her. Any other questions? Actually, I think we have enough time for one more round with four volunteers this time. Um, so if you would like to play, could you please come up? Or do we not have time? Oh, I see. Okay. We don't have time. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. Sorry, but more questions. We're here for them. No, it doesn't seem so. Yeah, so basically Alice is sort of like in the other world. So when the other three players are trying to enter her spiritual world, so Alice is, just as what our title said, Alice is invisible to all of them three. So only David, David can enter Alice's spiritual world to kind of um, show him in front of Alice to help her to get out of the maze. Yeah, and uh, in other words, Alice is also uh, is both invisible and untouchable. Like, 
So uh, the only person that is deaf that has ability to get into Alice's words, yeah. So in other words, uh, Alice do not have the ability to collide with the other players. That's the <laughs> that's the features of the game. Of the game. Oh, we, no, no, we, 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 we didn't meant to like do a jump scare to scare you guys. So, <laughs> so you can, you can feel that the feeling of Alice that he is not able to see a lot of things that is very horrible. And uh, yeah, you can see how struggle Alice is like in, in his, in her life and uh, uh, how much help those guys did to Alice. Um, okay, so um, the the entrance of the exit is on the right right top of the, uh, of the map. That is on the mini map, and uh, as the players clear the obstacles. You were just asking about the development process. Yes. So how did you guys develop? Did oh. you develop individually? Did you work together in the lab? Okay. Yeah. So about the development, we <laughs> we pretty much developed uh, in person in the lab, and we had a lot of farms like working with the same um, project. And uh, we did a lot of things. We used the GitHub to manage our repos, and uh, yeah, so a lot of things we put into our uh, into our games. Some codes work, some codes didn't work, and we have to try, we have to test, and we finally get this game. I think everybody likes it, mm -hmm. at least in our group. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think our artists came up with the hexagon map idea. Our artists, actually, Jack and Selena. Yeah, we wanted something um, a little bit more complex rather than just one uh, square shape. And what was kind of a trouble was coming up with all the walls after that because we actually had to like shift everything. <laughs> like every maze that we found wasn't hexagon hexagonal. So um, we had to sh take square mazes and actually shift them so we can get a nice um, maze working like that. Yeah, something that is very amazing is that the whole map is encoded totally into a TXT file just with several m numbers and we read that, we decode that and we construct the map in our game from that TXT file. Yes. Um, currently, this is just one map, but we have, this is a map actually with three sub-maps. Yeah, so we ha actually have three sub-maps combined into one big map. Yeah, so this is actually three. You can see the, the different texture of the ground that indicating which sub-map it is. Yeah, and also we have different music for different sub-maps. <laughs> Thank you.